Hello, this is Lindsay Adler, and I'm going to take you through a tutorial on how to do exquisite black and white conversions in Photoshop. I will take you step by step through converting an image to black and white and provide you with some tips for converting portraits. I have always loved black and white images. They are timeless and they seem to have more emotion to them. In the past with digital photography, there have been innumerable ways to convert to black and white in Photoshop, but none of them seem to give you complete control, and frequently, the more control often indicated more confusion. With CS3, Adobe has introduced an amazing tool that allows total simplicity and absolute control when converting to black and white. So let's get started with my examples. Today we are going to use this example of a tractor because of the wide range of color values in the image, which will help us best demonstrate exactly how this black and white conversion tool works. Adobe's new tool is its black and white conversion adjustment layer. So let's go to the bottom right and click on the adjustment layer button, which is the half moon cookie, and go up to where it says black and white. This opens the black and white dialog box. As soon as you open the dialog box, Photoshop automatically does a general conversion to black and white. It picks generic values to pick kind of a median for converting to black and white. If you refer to the top left of this tutorial, you will see the original tractor image so you can see how the different color values are affected during the black and white conversion. The dialog box has different sliders for red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, and magenta. What this means is that you can change how Photoshop interprets the black and white conversion for each different one of these channels. So first, if you drag the red slider left and right, you see how the red channel is affected. Dragging it left makes it darker, dragging it right makes it lighter. We'll do the same with each slider and take a look at how the different color values are affected. This gives you absolute control to decide how you want Photoshop to represent this black and white conversion. Here's one example of how you might convert to black and white. But this isn't the only solution. You can convert to black and white in literally millions of different ways. To see the black and white change, I'm going to turn the visibility of the layer on and off. Now I'm going to turn it off so that we can make another black and white conversion and see another example of the possibilities allotted by this black and white conversion tool. So I'm going to adjust the blues, the greens, the cyans, the yellows, all the different colors to come up with a different formula for how black and white will be converted. So here's the original image, here's the second conversion, and here's the original conversion. So let's compare the two different black and white conversions, and they're vastly different. Each has a different feel, and what's really amazing is that Photoshop lets you have this amount of control of how your black and white images are created. So now let's try converting with a portrait. We'll do the same thing as before, and go down to the little half moon cookie adjustment layer button, and then go to black and white conversion. You're going to primarily be concerning yourself with the red and yellow sliders. This is because these two colors are what makes up the skin tones in a portrait. So in this example, you see if you dry, drag the red slider right, the skin tones become almost white. When you drag it left, the red tones in the skin become heavier and darker. Same thing happens to the yellow. Skin tones lighten up when you drag it to the right, and they become darker when you drag them to the left. There's no exact formula for a black and white conversion for a portrait. This is because the conversion is based on your own artistic vision, as well as the fact that skin tones vary from individual to individual. So I'm going to pick something where the reds are a little darker, so I have a little bit of tone in the lips, but bring up the yellows so that the skin tone is lighter. What's great about this black and white conversion tool is that because you have adjustment layers, you can make different parts of the image be converted to black and white in different ways. So let me just show you how this would work in reality. Let's say, for example, I want to do a general black and white conversion, but I would like the model's lips to be converted to a darker color. So what I'm going to do in this instance is go back down to my adjustment layer button, go to black and white conversion, and I'm going to make adjustment to the red channel so the lips look dark the way that I would like them to be represented. Now looking at this, you see the skin tones aren't right, but I still have that old black and white adjustment layer. When I turn it on, the skin tones go back to normal. What's important to notice is that the black and white conversion layer that is closest to the background layer is the one that will be represented the most. The first conversion that reaches the image is the one that's conveyed. So now let's say that I want the lips to show through from that original black and white conversion. What I need to do is then go into the original black and white conversion and erase its effect in the area of the lips so that the second conversion can show through. I'm going to click on the original black and white conversion. I need to paint with black over the areas where I want the second conversion to show through, where I want the lips to become darker. For those of you who are familiar with layer mask, what I'm really doing is getting rid of the effect in a specific area. As the saying goes, white reveals, black conceals. 
So I'm going to paint black to conceal the effect of the original black and white conversion and let the darker black and white conversion show through in a very specific area. And I'm going to erase or paint black on the areas where I want the darker effect to show through. And it works perfectly to let me just selectively convert the lips to a darker tonality. And you can still go back into the original conversion and make changes if you decide, for example, that you would like the skin tone to be a little lighter, as I just did. Here's what the final image looks like. I was able to make an overall adjustment to the red and yellow channels to lighten up the skin tones and get them how I wanted them to convert. And then also to make a selective black and white conversion just to the lips. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. For more information and additional tutorials, please visit www.adlerphotoworkshops.com.